Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to take a first look at Ardennes 2 from Multi-Man Publishing. Now this is the 25th game in the Standard Combat series, a remake of game number 3 in the series, just the regularly named Ardennes. This game of course covers the Battle of the Bulge with a common rule set from the Standard Combat series, two big maps and six big scenarios. Let's jump in and take a look. I'm excited to take a look at this one. Before we jump in though, let's do a little bit of a general overview. If you are not familiar with the standard combat series, the way it works is that there is a core rule set that covers every game in the series, and they've been updating this core rule set over the decades as the series has progressed. Because as I mentioned in the original intro, Ardennes 2 is kind of a re-envisioning and an upgrade to the original Ardennes game, which was the third game in the Standard Combat series released in 1993, 30 years ago. So the rules have been updated to incorporate us uh, and make some changes, make things flow a little bit better and to improve gameplay. And what we've got now is the second envisioning of this game. The game, of course, covers the Battle of the Bulge, covering the Allied forces versus German forces in December of 1944. Uh, some general overview inter information, there are six scenarios inside, a campaign game, and then five other shorter scenarios. The campaign game lasts 16 days, each day is a turn, so it goes from the middle of December 1944 until the end of December 1944. In terms of scale, again, each turn is one day, each hex is one mile, and units are battalions and battalions brigade size units. So with all that being said, let's take a quick look at some of the metrics here on the back of the box. I'm going to focus here on the complexity which says medium. We're going to take a look at the rule set for here, the standard combat series rule set. And then there's also um, kind of unique scenario, uh, unique module specific rules. But I think even when you add those two up together, medium is certainly I think a very modest estimate of the complexity here. I would say that it's probably, if I'm going to one to ten, it's probably a three and a half to maybe a four, but this is a very, I would call this kind of a meat and potatoes type of series. It's advertised as a series to kind of introduce people into Hex Encounters war games, very traditional Hex Encounters war games, but there really aren't any surprises with the rules. So I might be inclined to go as low as kind of a three and a half out of 10 on a one to 10 scale. Certainly if you've played a Hex Encounters game before, a three and a half I think is a fairly representative number. Now the Solitaire rating is given as medium there is a fog of war rule in the uh, standard core set, uh, rule set that talks about how you can't examine your enemy's your opponent's stacks until you commit to attacking them in a particular combat round. Um, that's really the only place I think where you're going to see hidden information in this game that would kind of cause any kind of an issue with the solitaire system if you're playing both sides. There's no bot in here or anything like that, of course. With all that being said now, let's jump in and open up and take a look at what's inside. So we have uh, two dice, uh, red and white. We'll put those off to the side, and we're going to start with our documentation. Again, we have two documents, the standard series rules, which are now up to version 1.8, and then Ardennes 2, which are the module-specific rules. Now, if we look at these series rules, I think you can see that that 3.5 uh, rating is, is actually is pretty... That's probably a pretty representative rating of this. There are uh, eight pages of rules in all, and the last page here is actually the designer's note. The rules do start right away on the front page. They have been, over the years, upgraded to color. Um, I've read these before. We've looked at uh, Panzer Battles on this channel and then an Africa Core game on the channel in this series. And so we've looked at the rules before, and I kind of uh, skimmed through them now to get a sense for how the game plays. And again, I think these rules, because they've been iterated over and refined over the course of three decades or more, uh, they're pretty uh, kind of fine-tuned. And you won't find anything in here, I think, that's going to be challenging to understand. Really good examples of play and stuff like that. So it's a it's a very smooth sail if, you uh, if, if you're kind of going through this rule set. And and again, if you've played a standard combat series game before, these rules are exactly identical to the rules from previous games. So you're going to have, you're basically almost done with those once you kind of glance over them and then refresh them. Then we're going to take a little bit of look here at the series.
series-specific rules. There are uh, seven pages here of series-specific rules covering elements of this Ardennes battle that are particular to it. There's some rules notes in here for the, the map and things like that. There's some unit, unit sizes and scale stuff is kind of covered here as well. You get a sequence of play and the turn sequence, some kind of traffic jam element, which is uh, an element of this. We've got west wall hexes to contend with, uh, disorganized units and what they mean in this particular battle, then some kind of modifications and clarifications to come combat and overruns, barrage rules, and then artillery and supply, as well as there is a bridge bu uh, busting rule in here. You can blow bridges if you're the U.S. to try to slow down the German advance. And then some special rules that are unique to individual units. But again, these are really straightforward. They're only seven pages. So all in all, if you add up to seven there and the probably seven here, you've got 14 pages of rule. So a lot of examples scattered in here. This is a pretty easy game to learn, which again is, I think, the strength of this series because this is something one of the things that you've got nice with a series like this is you've already learned the basic rules if you've played a game before that so you can kind of go through the scenario specific rules and through the module specific rules and you are good to go uh, a lot of um, these are based here on victory points we're seeing in terms of victory points for hexes here and those are all clearly marked on the map and then the back half of the scenario of the module specific rule set here are the scenarios and again there are six scenarios uh, some of them cover both maps in the game this is the campaign map the campaign series here that covers the 16 turn 16 day full battle of the bulge and then we've got five shorter scenarios of various lengths that are uh, kind of articulated through the rest of the the rule set here then we've got some more uh, designer notes here that are in there and different kind of elements in, in terms of this module then we've got a reinforcement schedule as well here too so all the information you need to be able to play this game uh, in the series here train effects chart then again on the back of the scenario uh, kind of module specific rule set here. Let's take a look at our counter sheets. We have two of them, 560 counters in all. These are half inch counters um, printed on both sides. We've got one for the allies here and then one for the Axis forces with some markers scattered out here for barrage and disorganization on the Axis counter sheets. Again, uh, printed on both sides, there is a step system for combat and kind of highlighting the the basic nature, if you would, of this system. I don't want to say basic, but kind of the, a very standard system. We've got attack on the left of the counter here. Uh, we look at the middle number is your defense, and the right side is your movement there. Anything that's highlighted in yellow, so we can see these top left counter sheet here is highlighted in yellow, means that the unit has exploit capability, so some kind of a mobile unit that's got some extra speed with it. Now, I will say that uh, zones of control in this game are handled a little bit differently than they are in other units in the series. There are zone of control bonds in some cases, so there are some unique elements to this particular game in the series in terms of handling zones of control. Uh, because in other series, the it costs you two movement points to move through a zone of, to move into a zone of control, and you can keep going. But if we look at here, we can see uh, quite a bit of the allied forces that are involved in the battle looking on both sides. I like the uh, clarity again and the size and stuff. Looking now at the German units here, uh, we can see a lot of armor involved in this offensive, a lot of mechanized units. And then we're looking over here, we've got German artillery as well. And then the markers here for barrage and then disorganization. So really, uh, again, a very clean counter set, uh, kind of what you would expect with the standard combat series. We have two player aids to look at, a combat results table, which again, you know, this is, this is not a series that's going to overwhelm you with complexity. It's designed to be quick to learn and easy to play. And a lot of the variety and challenges comes not from trying to figure out the rules, but from getting the, the units down on the battlefield and figuring out what kind of strategies and tactics you're going to use. Um, we can see here, so these are identical, one for each player. Combat results table on this side. The other elements on the back here, we have air supply for artillery table, disorganized effects, barrage marker effects, and then a uh, half rec reconciliation table. I'm not quite sure yet um, what that means. But some very uh, standard player, aid, player aids that are going to help with the game in this regard. Now the fun part, let's take a look at our maps. So the maps are rather large in this series. We have 22 inch by 34 inch and there are two of them. And again, some of the scenarios, the, the full campaign game of course, I won't be able to fit all of this one here, looking at the first one here, which is the eastern half of the battlefield. I uh, won't be able to fit all of this on the camera, but these can be butted up on the left side to make a 44 inch by 34 inch full uh, two map uh, kind of campaign for the campaign game and some of the larger scenarios. We can see over here on the left, we've got Bastogne. Uh, these here, these yellow hexes with the X's, I believe those are traffic. And then we have some uh, 
some fortifications here that are in the red, covering Germany off to the east here. It goes up as well. I like the color palette on this one. It's rather subdued, but I think it makes for a nice contrast between the map and the units. Everything's really clearly marked and using that standard uh, multi-man publishing uh, hex numbering system where you can see these very clearly. They're dark on light and then they number every fifth one for kind of, so you just kind of count up to figure out what are inside here. Clairvaux, Bastogne here on the left, St. Vith up to the north here. Maps are kind of the terrain on these, of course, is very similar in kind of the similarity of terrain. We do have rivers and then we can see quite a bit here. If we look closely at one of these, um, we can see these bridge, uh, bridge uh, the plunger markers here. This is, means that I believe this is one of the bridges that the Allies can blow to try to slow down the German, at all, uh, German attack here. And again, I'm not quite sure how that rule gets handled in the game, but uh, that is an option for the Allied forces. But yeah, I like the artwork on this one. It looks really clean. I mean, these, these are not games that uh, are going to overwhelm you with their uh, artistic design. This again, I, I kind of keep going back to that term, but it feels very much like uh, meat and potatoes wargaming. This is a game you're gonna pick up, you're gonna learn the rules fast, you're gonna get it to the table fast, and be able to play scenarios quickly. So you're kind of focusing on gameplay. These again are paper maps, kind of a lighter, a, a lighter gloss material here. Now this is the Western map of the two. We can see we have our turn track, there's a weather table, airstrikes for the US, bridge blowing table here, and then a terrain key on this part of it. Other than that, this is all, uh, both maps are purely covered with uh, units that you play on in kind of actual terrain. So again, these butt together, I'll show these together now as a 44 by uh, 46 map, uh, 44 by 34, sorry, uh, on that side there. And we can see as well, we get up in here into the Western part, into Belgium or so on this ed edge of the map. Very clean terrain. Looks like it's gonna be really easy to play. This one has uh, quite a pedigree in terms of it. It was very popular as an Ardennes game back when it was published in 1993. And I know there are some a number of rules they've refreshed for this one to bring the series up to date in terms of rules with the standard combat series and kind of fine tune and refine the gameplay. Very much looking forward to getting this one to the table. Ardennes 2 from Multi-Man Publishing, the 25th game in the standard combat series. Uh, happy to answer questions down down below. Um, if you liked this video, you might be interested in our first look at Panzer Battles, another game in this standard combat series. I'll put a link to that one up here for your viewing pleasure. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.